What made it made this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Christian. On October 15, 2019, Christine shared a link on Twitter to a page on the fundraising site GoFundMe, which aimed to gather funds for her trip to the My Little Pony-themed convention, BabsCon. A Twitter user asked why did she not get a job instead to make money, to which she wrote that she was unemployable because of online haters, and that she was already constantly employed as a goddess. The Twitter user returned to reply that she would be fine if she left the internet and got a job pushing trolleys at a supermarket, and that she was not unhirable, but lazy instead. Chris wrote back that she was not lazy, but busy instead. Chris then blocked her critic. At the same time, artist Ben Saint continued to develop his comic story to focus on slime and slime-based characters, much to the dislike of Chris, who told him to go back to making stories about Saint's original characters Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk. On October 16th, Chris's devout follower and love interest Jacob Sockness proposed that she should remove all tiers on her Patreon, wherein people paid less than $20 per month because it was uneconomical. He then vowed to pay for the orders himself, disregarding his trip to her house to instead try help her get the household out of debt. Later that day, Christine notified her paying supporters on Patreon that she managed to catch up with back orders of Sonichu comic books to be sent to her patrons, though she skipped the personally signed requests. As recompense for those who had paid for signed copies of her books, she would send to them her custom-made Sonichu-themed expansion pack for the MLP-themed trading card game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Ship Fic Folder. During this time, Christine continued to busy herself creating more original cards based around the Sonichu universe, including one dedicated to Sturban Chu, a Sonichu created by the Idea Guys, and Robert Chu, the Idea Guys influenced Sonichu incarnation of her father, Bob Chandler. On October 19th, Chris commented on an update to a comic created by one of her enablers, Rosie Lilichu, which focused on Lilichu's original character, Liliana writing that she would prefer to see more than the one page per month of the story as was declared by the artist. Also on that day, a user on Reddit posted about his and his brother's experience with meeting Christine when they surprised her with a visit to her home, posting a photo they took together. He mentioned that she smelled a little like marijuana, though it is unconfirmed whether she was partaking in the substance again at that time. The Reddit user later posted an audio recording of their meeting on YouTube. Chandler? Yes. Hello. We live in the area, sorry to bother yeah. you, but yeah. we've been fans for a few years and stuff and thank you. thought we'd kind of give some gifts. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, dude. Yeah, it's nice to meet yeah. you. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, how you been? I've been doing all right. That's cool. Uh, we're doing very well, you know, just having a cope with the events. Of the yeah, I, and everything. I heard about the, the situation with the guy. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to hear about that. Oh, well, don't worry about it. It's yeah. all cool. We're all looking out for your best interests, yeah. and yeah. you definitely have our support, so. Thank you. Yeah. I love your blue eyes. Oh, appreciate it. I like your blue and green eyes. They're really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, um, uh, is it cool if you get a selfie or something? Or? Later that day, According to messages she sent to her friend via Discord, Chris's mother, Barbara, began experiencing high blood pressure and asked to be taken to the emergency room of a hospital, where it was determined that there was nothing wrong with her. Chris believed it was a combination of stress and the incoming magic energies of Dimension C-197. Also on that day, Jacob Sockness wrote that he was not destined for a normal life, as he was currently chasing after his love, who was also a goddess, over the internet. Chris wrote that she too would not have a normal life, asking what normal truly meant. Jacob then shared a photo of two individuals cosplaying as the Marvel character Deadpool and horror movie icon Michael Myers, respectively, asking if he and Chris could kiss like that during their attendance at BabsCon. 
Christine replied that she did not want to cosplay as Deadpool or a zombie, but was open to kissing Sockness in the future. Sockness then posted photos of certification certifying that he was free of sexually transmitted diseases for her. At around the same time, Twitter user Righteous for Quick, a supporter of Chris, posted a combined photo of himself wearing a Michael Myers mask with makeup on and Christine standing against the transgender flag, taking part in the Twitter hashtag campaign to declare that trans rights were human rights. Righteous later created his own card for Twilight Sparkle's secret chip fic folder depicting himself and directed Chris to it on Twitter, but did not receive a response. On October 25th, she received her new custom-ordered decks of cards for the MLP-themed game containing the cards she designed. Also on that day, she discovered on her front porch the book The Legend of the Ten Elemental Masters by Alalelia, a game developer who had gained online notoriety amongst forum subcultures some ten years prior due to his eccentricities. Finally on that day, Chris criticized Matt Groening and Seth MacFarlane, the creators of the animated series The Simpsons and Family Guy respectively, for maintaining the unaging and youthful appearances of their characters when they have in fact grown up since their conception. Lisa Simpson, for example, was allegedly an adult by then who was set to become the next president of the United States in 2020. She claimed the creators were doing so for monetary gain, and it was criminal of them to mischronicle their OCs. Chris admitted that she used to act the same, but was reconciling, making amends, and dealing with many original characters across dimensions. On October 26th, Christine livestreamed on YouTube for 91 minutes, playing the card game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Chip Fic Folder, utilizing her own custom-made expansion decks of cards. Ah. It took me a long time to set all this up, you know, just... Uh, so yeah, as you can see, I have a few lovely big boxes for my secret ship fix folder cards now. That's how tall this pony deck is gonna be. The one out of three decks is gonna be this big. Now that's a mighty meaty sandwich. But yeah, you're pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much gonna demonstrate a game of Twilight Sparkle's secret ship fix folder. I'll be a play Solitaire, which I have been able to figure out recently. <sighs> in case you're wondering what that was, that's our cat, Baby. Our gold cat, Baby. He has a bit of a nasal problem. We're, gonna, we're taking him to the vet. He's all right. Okay? We're taking care of him. So, don't ask about that. Don't troll me about that. Do not troll me about that. Oh, wait a minute. <sighs> Wee! That happened. There's one. Oh boy. Okay, let's do a shotgun wedding now between Romeo and Sturdy. What? <laughs> oh, why not? Hello, Sylvia. There's our cat, Sylvia. Stay off the table. And you can see how big this shipping grid can get, and this is why you need a card table or, you know. Well, the center point is an arm's length. Arm's length. I need to see, stay off the table. Ah, huh, thank you. Okay, game over. Of course, this is more fun when you got more than two, you have more than one player, and you're essentially clearing ships off of the board. Especially when you got one this full. This is full. I have a heavy bag here for you to put in the trash. I'll get to you in a moment, Mom. I love you. I love you all. Be safe. See you next time. Bye-bye. Boop. At the same time, QB Farms user Duff conducted an interview with Ellie Hirschberg, who had created several fundraising campaigns to fund Christine's travels. Hirschberg wrote that he loved Jacob Sockness and was waiting on Chris's permission to engage in a three-person polyamorous relationship involving himself, Chris, and Jacob. Ali said that he was banned from QB Farms for his dedication to Christine and that he fully believed in the dimensional merge after Christine gifted him with special powers, which allowed his third eye to begin opening. Publicly, Hirschberg hoped to save enough money to attend BabsCon in California 
and meet with Christine, calling her his friend who gave him his psychic abilities. On October 27th, a Twitter user, whose original character was made into a Twilight Sparkles secret chipfic folder card, revealed that they had played the card game in person with Christine, who gifted them a selection of the cards. Chris also sent cards to other Twitter acquaintances whose OCs were depicted in her custom decks. This included Jacob Sockness, who received two cards for the game, as well as a greeting card proposing her love for him, in which she wrote that her mother, Barbara, was holding on to a dolphin necklace that Sockness had sent to her, and that his donated money was used on fresh food. The next day, Chris shared the discovery of a convenience store called 812, riffing on the 7-Eleven convenience store chain. Since it was located in Jersey, the purported location of Gotham City of the DC Comics universe, she took it as a sign of the oncoming dimensional merge. She then went to her Magichan account and posed as her supposed husband and shared the recent convenience store tweet Chris wrote herself, confirming further signs of the merge. Christine then reasoned with a Twitter user who reasoned that Gotham could not be merged because it was not located in Dimension C-197 since she had mentioned the World Trade Center Twin Towers existed in the aforementioned Dimension yet were not referred to in any work from DC Comics. Chris argued that the Twin Towers in the alternate Dimension fell long before and that they were not mentioned in the comics because they were not properly chronicled. She then took back her previous claims and stated that the Twin Towers never existed in C-197, attributing her misspeaking to everything happening that day, making her mind, body, and soul busy. The enablers, Sarah and Steve, then proclaimed that they were frightened after Christine's recent posts regarding the coming merge. She came to quell their concerns. Jacob then wrote that he dreamed of Christine, the most heavenly goddess and his beautiful one true love, every night, for she was the only one who could soothe the soul of a fire-breathing dragon that was himself. Chris admitted that she may have the power to tame such a dragon god, but confessed that Jacob was not one and merely a sorcerer and channeler, closing by telling him she had a rough and active day and was too tired to think. At the same time, Righteous for Quick posted a short looping clip of himself feeling cute after sending prayers to Christine. The next day, a user on Reddit posted a drawing that Chris made of her alleged neighbor and his cat on September 1, 2018, claiming to share it online for the first time, though it had been posted on Kiwi Farms shortly after its creation. On October 31st, Chris noted for her followers that it was Halloween, writing that the dimensional iron curtain between dimensions was really thin. During that same day, her online friend and enabler, Maker Night V, argued with Ben Saint about his continued use of Chris's characters and using his comics to mess with her. Saint angrily rejected Maker's claims, writing that he was writing an important story. Christine came to Ben's defense, revealing that even before he began writing about the events of the comic, her character Nightstar had already met with Saint's characters Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk and sent them to investigate the slime situation. She elaborated that herself and even her family were already involved with the situation and Ben was only drawing and sharing the events as he was fated to do though he was criticized for deviating into an alternate timeline where he explored other themes she didn't like. Nevertheless, those events too were apparently fated to happen. Later on, Sockness tweeted at Chris a photo of a significant collection of free condoms. Chris did not respond. Maker Night V asked her directly if Jacob was visiting her as he had previously pledged he would. She replied that he was not coming to her house at that time. On November 1st, Righteous for Quick posted a doctored photo of himself in full Michael Myers attire and another individual at a Halloween party, with Christine photoshopped in to stand beside him, wishing that he could meet her. Chris did not respond to his post. Also on that day, Sarah and Steve publicly defended Jacob Sockness, as he had confessed to saying threatening things while angry and was ultimately not a risk or danger to anyone. Chris agreed with their statement. Sarah and Steve then suggested that devoted followers and believers of Christine may call themselves Quickens, who practice Quickenism. 
Chris commented that like archivers and students of her activities, or Christorians, her religious-like followers should also have a dedicated term to call themselves. She reflected that Christians and Buddhists were named after the leading figures of their religions, but in Chris's case, she identified as many things, such as console patron unit, possible goddess to the Sonichu and Rosechu species of Pokémon, as well as a possessor of a slew of other powers in Dimensions 1218 and C197. After thinking about the topic further, she concluded that Quickenism did not sound right for her, eventually considering the terms followers of Chris-chan Sonichu, Fox, and Fockwix as possibilities, but felt that her followers could come up with something better. She soon after checked the thesaurus and found devotee as a suitable synonym for worshipper, thusly creating the term devotees of Christian Sonichu, or docs. On November 2nd, Christine tweeted about the vision she had in which her mother, Barbara, was not part Sonichu or Rosechu, and that after a few years, she would pass on and be reincarnated as a special female Rosechu. Also on that day, Kiwi Farms user, the American Hedgehog, posted three newly made Twilight Sparkles secret chipfic folder cards that were shared with him by some unknown Twitter followers of Chris. Two of these featured photographs of interiors and exteriors of her house with drawings of her alleged spouses, Silvana Rosechu and Mewtwo, superimposed over them. The third featured a background image of Barbara standing in a room with her past husband, Bob Chandler, in his Sonichu form seemingly standing next to her. On November 3rd, Jacob Sockness shared an article which claimed that the Kiwi Farms willingly hosted future killers and had led to the suicides of four individuals, branding Joshua Moon, or Null, the site's administrator, the possible devil in the flesh. Chris then responded to Sockness's claims regarding Kiwi Farms, noting that not everyone on the site was evil and there was some genuine good among the remainder. However, she did apparently recognize that there was evil in Null's eyes, and thought it best for people to begin to take down the Kiwi Farms permanently. Sarah and Steve then attempted to create a rift between Christine and Maker Nightvi, after Maker asked Jacob about Null's actions, conceivably as a means to develop a closer relationship to Sockness who was being encouraged by Maker and others to be thought of as an untrustworthy individual. Jacob further wrote that his cross-dimensional alter ego, Michiro, proclaimed Maker Night V was worse than the evil demon, Jacoba, acting like a manipulative demon. Christine wrote that she understood the claims and that Maker's future actions would determine her true intentions. Her recent comments drew concern from Maker and her other online friends, who were cautious of Chris being manipulated into thinking certain detrimental things, like during the Idea Guy saga, and being driven away from the people who had her best intentions at heart. Christine claimed to understand their concerns, and only wished for them to denounce Kiwi Farms and escape Null's deceptive grasp though her friends stated that most of them did not have any connection to the farms, and only wished for her to willingly see that she was being manipulated by someone who was driving her true friends away. Sarah and Steve then posted screenshots of private messages they had with Chris to prove that her account had not been hacked, which featured a new photograph of herself solemnly looking at the camera with her signature lightning bolt, blue heart, lightning bolt emoji insignia lightly drawn onto her forehead. The enabling pair commented that there appeared to be sadness in her eyes. Christine wrote back that she had just woken up for the day, making the post at 12.51 pm local time. Later on, Maker Night V denied supporting the Fuhrer of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, as alleged by Sockness, accusing Sockness of believing such things. Her followers proposed that Jacob was trying to create a divide between her and Chris so that he could control and exploit Christine. Chris wrote that Jacob did not make those previous statements himself, but rather the demon Jacoba speaking through his body during a channeling session. She stated that Maker needed to affirm her good intentions by working with Sarah and Steve. Jacob joined the discourse to state that he was archiving the religions and history of Kidasuna the alien world purportedly located within the Andromeda galaxy, the texts of which contradicted each other often, and that he was using quotes from them while addressing trolls. 
Maker replied that he created Kidasuna himself, based on pre-existing ideas. Chris defended Jacob by clarifying that Kidasuna was in fact real in Dimension 1218, and that he did not invent the individuals who lived there, but merely discovered them and established communications. Maker rejected the claim, with Christine further clarifying that Sockness did not create the Andromeda galaxy or the individuals who lived there, and that many times, his tweets were the result of nefarious characters from Kidasuna channeling through him, asking her why was the concept difficult to comprehend. Sarah and Steve separately told their followers that Maker Nightfi was being manipulated into turning against them and Christine, writing that people did this to everyone who supported Christine. They warned others to recognize the signs and not fall for their tactics. Chris retweeted their message, reminding her audience that people should keep their common sense, wits, and instincts sharp, clear, and calm as possible so that they would not fall for the haters' mind games. Later again, Righteous for Quick posted another doctored image of himself along with other members of the LGBTQ community, with Chris inserted into the group, depicting his supposed dream of himself and Christine the Goddess, forming an alliance. On November 5th, Christine went to vote in elections for the Virginia Senate and House of Delegates, posting a photo of her sticker signifying that she had voted. Also on that day, Ali Hirschberg claimed that he was bullied and allegedly beaten by trolls who tried to manipulate Chris and turn her away from him. Their attacks seemingly included beating him up to the point that he required hospital treatment, receiving prank calls, and getting death threats on his social media accounts. Hirschberg was willing to save large amounts of money to ensure that Christine could attend the BabsCon convention so she could meet her love, Jacob Sockness. He wished Christine and Jacob the best. Also on that day, Chris wrote a series of tweets hoping to rectify the rift that was developing between her most trusted supposed friends. Listen, everyone, please. I am very well aware of Jacob and Maker. They both are good people with the same goal of concern of my own health and well-being. Jacob is his own individual, but he is presently still easily manipulated by Jacoba. Magichan and I have been working tough and hard to remedy that. We know everything about all this, and we have plans for counter defenses and measures should anything bad happen. But know this, I, Christine Weston Chandler Sonichu, CPU Blueheart, am not being manipulated by anyone. I remain grateful and most appreciative of everyone's continued concerns, kindness and support. But we all need to stop fighting each other, especially in defending our Earths in due time." She further wrote that she was not going to break up any of her friendships or allyships, and highlighted that they should all agree that they needed to defend their Earths from the likes of Null and Jacoba. On November 6th, Chris remade the tweet directing business inquiries to her business email that was being managed by Null to instead ask people to contact her personal AOL email address, and also encouraged direct messaging via Twitter, as well as receiving mail at her home or even personal visits. Sockness replied with his personal PayPal donation link, asking for donations meant for Christine to be sent to him to assure proper use. Sarah and Steve then asked Chris for advice on their Sonichu OCs, Sarah Chu and Steven Chu, only to be surprised by the revelation that Christine recalled the characters through shared memories and that they in fact existed in Dimension C197. On November 7th, Ben Saint posted an illustrated image of his characters Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk deceased and corroded from the slime eliminating rain that was falling on them, implicating that Chris's actions caused their demise. Chris wrote that the picture was from an alternate timeline, while the two in the main timeline were safe in Quickville and then in the My Little Pony world of Equestria during the rain, so they were not affected by it. Also on that day, Righteous for Quick posted a curious photo on the subreddit Cult of Quick, of which he was the head moderator. 
It was taken by a supposed fellow worshipper of Christine, which depicted a steaming sermon in a church-like setting, showing three individuals deep in prayer, as the video in which Magichan purportedly speaks through Christine's body is projected onto the wall behind the podium. Later again, Chris posted newly created Twilight Sparkle's secret chipfic folder cards depicting the main characters of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, describing their future actions and achievements as was to occur in her foretold seasons 10 to 14 of the TV series. Chris commented that she had not watched the three-part final episode of the show and would only do so after season 10 would air on the Discovery Family TV channel in the year 2020, and when Hasbro and the cast and crew of the series would confirm the news of the new season. The next day, spurred on by Jacob's proclamations of an oncoming war, along with deadly diseases and nuclear attacks between the two dimensions, Chris confirmed that bad things would happen to only the self-counterparts of haters and really bad people of the Earth in Dimension 1218, as they were all isolated to a certain troll city in C-197. However, the Idea Guys, Joshua Wise and Stephen Boyd would survive because they still owed Christine $6,000. Null and his pony persona, on the other hand, were fated to die. On November 9th, YouTube channel 3GI, which had previously organized the multi-creator created Shrek Retold video, which had featured a contribution from Christine, released a trailer for their upcoming collaborative remake of the 1996 original video animation Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which also would be comprising of contributions from various creators. The trailer featured a short clip from Chris's input, seemingly showing Sonic transforming into Sonichu. Later on, after Chris Chan focused, YouTuber Gibby began posting video updates concerning Chris and the actions of Sockness and Sarah and Steve. Sarah and Steve made their Twitter account protected, so only approved followers could view their posts. Jacob then threatened to release Gibby's private information to the media and declared him an abuser of quote-unquote retarded people and transphobic because he did not address Chris by feminine pronouns. Sockness proceeded to post many short tweets, ranging from expressing his lust for Christine, who he found to be a mother-like figure, to voicing his disgust at Gibby, announcing him as his enemy. Also on that day, Ben Saint expressed his annoyance on his private Discord server after he ended his most recent comic on a cliffhanger, which placed his character Phantom Horn in a perilous situation. To which, in response, Chris intervened in his storyline and drew a new trading card, depicting them being rescued. On November 10th, Saint hosted a four-hour-long livestream with Chris on the streaming site Twitch, during which they mostly discuss their respective comic universes, My Little Pony, politics, and religion. Should I should I name a couple more mods? I feel like the chat is blowing up with some some randos, some jerks today. Mr. Yeah. Christian, Joe and I, woohoo! Yeah, um, Keyblade Spirit asks, I've got a question about the themes of your work, Chris. I found that Sonichu deals a lot with collision, both literally and ideologically. There are all kinds of collisions, all seeming to lead up to one final collision in the dimensional merge. Uh, do you agree with that interpretation? Um, collision. Um, I'm gonna say among which, yes, uh, since we do break the fourth wall a bunch of times. That's true, and you have to collide with the fourth wall in order to break it. Yep. Yeah, alright. Okay, Chris, I don't know if you remember this, but years ago, I commissioned you to draw me something. Do you, do you remember this? You probably don't, but it's actually, you can see it right here, where my finger is pointing on the stream. It's hanging up in my room, and I have kept it ever since. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, essentially what happened to... Liquid crests. Yeah, because he got pulled down the hole by the um, uh, the devil trolls, and then we never heard anything more about him. And I just really wanted to know what hap what happened to him down there. And uh, you answered it. I think this was like fifty dollars. This was like the best fifty dollars I ever spent. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, Kazzy Snap asks, um, "Are you doing No Nut November?" Uh, that's news to me. I have not heard that before. Oh, you don't know about No Nut November? 
It's uh, is in you just uh, you don't have sex or masturbate through through November, and that's it. You don't nut. <laughs> you know what? That's every month out of the year for me. So it's a <laughs> point. oh, uh, Ali Banjo Twitch asks, "How are your psychic abilities coming along?" Very well. I'll eventually be able to show a better example, but they're really progressing very well. I'm beginning to levitate things much better. Really? At least I'm making objects light, very much, very lighter. Mm. Um, Magic Chan is he's is he living with you right now? Yes. Is, okay. Um, how's he doing? Mm, he's working very hard. He's making sure everything progresses in the merge and everything goes smoothly and accordingly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. On November twelfth. Jacob posted a transcript of a supposed conversation between Magichan and Jacob's alter ego, Michiro, in which Magichan apparently foretold that in order to conceive Chris's daughter, Crystal Weston Chandler, Chris was supposed to have sex with and impregnate her recent fundraiser organizer, Ali Hirschberg, who was female to male transgender. Christine wrote that Hirschberg was not likely to be the father of her destined child and that the posted conversation was said to have been confirmed by Magi Chan to have taken place, though noted there were some discrepancies. Maker suggested that Magi Chan did not sound like himself in the transcript because Sockness made it all up. Chris rejected the claim, citing that Jacob's way of typing made Magi Chan sound different. The next day, Hasbro revealed their plans for a My Little Pony spin-off series called Pony Life, which Christine rejected, demanding seasons 10 through 14 of Friendship is Magic instead. In a plausible attempt to irritate her, Jacob theorized that Pony Life was actually the destined next five seasons of the show that Christine had foretold, a thought she angrily rejected. On November 16th, she posted a declaration rejecting Pony Life in favor of seasons 10 to 14 of Friendship is Magic to several different Twitter accounts that posted fan art of the new series, which she dubbed Go Pony, comparing it to the stylistically similar animated series Teen Titans Go. In addition, she posted a selection of new Twilight Sparkles Secret Chipvic folder cards depicting seeming protests at Hasbro headquarters attended by Chris Chan Sonichu, Nightstar, and the main six protagonists. One card in particular tells the story of Chris and Nightstar confronting the showrunning executives and demanding that they continue Generation 4 of Friendship is Magic, demands to which they heed. On November 19th, Chris's second garnishment case with second round sub for unpaid debt was filed, setting the next hearing date for January 15th, 2020. On that same day, Christine posted on Twitter that it was once again time for the Chandlers to need more money, posting a link to her PayPal donation link, asking followers not to tell her to get a job or some shit like that. She added that it wasn't easy completing the Dimension merge, with the restrictions and limitations of the real-world Dimension, writing that if it were easy, she would have fully entered Dimension C197 and completed the merge over a year ago, so called for a stop to the hating and bad trolling. She soon after posted a photo of her mother, lying down and vacantly staring upward, claiming she was giving Chris grief regarding finances. One user criticized her for showing an ugly side of her personality, to which she apologized, citing her being tired and overworked as the cause. She returned to reveal that she managed to get enough donations to keep the family stable for a while. Later on, after an inquisitive Twitter user asked her about the C quarters and W quarters as seen in the Sonichu comics, Christine elaborated that it was an idea conceived by the so-called Christine Chan, Chris's self-counterpart in Quickville, and the coins both equaled 25 US cents. Chris called it a crazy idea from Christine Chan among many, but admitted that she worked very hard to defend Quickville. On November 20th, Chris tweeted that she completed making the Nightstar and Friends expansion pack for the Twilight Sparkles Secret Chipfic folder card game, which featured a card representing herself, Chris Chan Sonichu, the so-called OC of OCs, depicting her drawing of Chris Chan Sonichu with a new photo of herself imitating her character's power pose. On that same day, 
Jacob Sockness confessed that due to poor advice from his sugar daddy or elderly sexual partner who also provided him with monetary supplements, he did not have enough money to pay rent for his apartment in the near future and also likely could not save enough to attend the BabsCon convention in 2020 and meet with Christine, who also seemed to not have enough money to attend either. The next day, Kiwi Farms moderator, The American Hedgehog, noted that the title of a 2010 Chris Chan YouTube video was cited in the Cambridge University published book, Colloquial English, Structure and Variation, which listed Christian's quote, Tito got no luck against we Brits, Irish and Scots, as an example of using the nominative pronoun we in an accusative case. On November 22nd, Christine shared a link to her new website, quickvilleshopping.com, where she sold her custom-made expansion decks of cards for Twilight Sparkle's secret chip fake folder. Twitter followers complained about the high cost of the cards, but Jacob defended her, claiming he was going to use them as tarot cards or a means of gaining insight into one's past, present and future by drawing and interpreting cards. On November 26th, Chris livestreamed herself playing a solo game of Twilight Sparkle's secret chip fic folder for 1 hour and 36 minutes. I am not reading your comments, so your hate is not being heard at all! Hey, Maker, shout out to you, Maker. Here's your knifey. He's a good boy. And there's a cat. Off, boy. Here she's our little baby. Get off the table. But without further ado, let's get to shuffling. I'm not reading your comments. So, fully on you, haters. <laughs> Yeah, for why not? Since this is a gender change card, we'll just say the wild goes to his male now. We have Jamsta. There's another jerk up. Sandy. There's Walsh. There's Walsh. Okay. There's the epic online party. Ah! Ah, the remnants of fucking blue spike. Fuck. Fuck da. Fuck da. No, no, no. Method acting. Okay. Don't oh, me girl. You win this goal when three male and male ships have been played in a single turn. Okay, so anyway. Af after this, also. Uh, I'm thinking my brain is going out of order. Nah. Essentially, what's going to happen is I'm going to be talking with. Vendors and online sellers and who sell secret ship fit cards and I'm gonna talk with them and else they'll, they'll I'll let them sell my deck and expansion packs between their websites and at conventions, including BabsCon. So at around that time one of Chris's paying patrons stated in a Discord conversation that they still had not received any Sonitu issues as promised. They also noted that their boyfriend had sent Christine a letter telling her to stop trusting Sockness, attempting to bribe her with $9 and some magic cards. On November 27th, after reading Jacob's most recent tweets, she confessed that even though she loved and cared for him, she could not be close to him due to unknown reasons caused by the merging of dimensions. She added that people should stop bullying Sockness for the things he said while under possession by Jacoba. After declaring news of a great struggle that was to take place between the Earths of 1218 and C-197 and the evil Rokot Empire of Kidasuna, she reiterated that she could not be Jacob's sweetheart and pleaded once again for people to stop bullying him. The following day, Jacob created a new Twitter account, Goddess Emmanuel, playing on Christine's belief of the feminine god creator and shared with her a falsified direct message from YouTuber Gibby he made himself, which purported to show Gibby's communications with Null, revealing that he lied about Sockness in his videos, was part of the Idea Guy saga and was directly involved with stopping the merge. Chris replied to Goddess Emmanuel, claiming that she knew of Gibby's vicious intentions and manipulations. However, her decision to push back Jacob's advances was not caused by Gibby's videos, and it was largely because Sockness had for the moment expended his usefulness. 
Chris remained confident that the merge would not be delayed and would not fail, in spite of Gibby's bullshit. Also on November 28th, she made two tweets to commemorate the American holiday of Thanksgiving, writing that she was thankful to be in better communication with her supposed spouses and new people she had met over the year. Furthermore, she was thankful for her growing powers and the Dimension merge coming closer to fruition and her abilities to discern the legit from the bullshit. After a decade-long cycle of bullying, mistakes, and ill-judgment-ridden adversity, Christine found solace after rejecting the reality that treated her so harshly, greatly aided by individuals seeking some semblance of internet notoriety, driven by the misguided belief that they were contributing to a story of historical note. Chris's life was one that no one should envy, nor influence, for if left to her own devices, she may not believe it was possible to escape her consequences in search of a better life.